Good afternoon. So, following my last uh, clip, today I would like to discuss, explain about what is PGS and what is PGD, or we call it pre implantation genetic diagnosis or pre implantation genetic screen, and what's applications and who need it. So, first of all, let's uh, make a definition. What is exactly pre-implantation genetic screen or pre-implantation genetic diagnosis? So basically, we know that we are all made of cells and each cell has a nuclear which carry our DNA material and our DNA determine who we are, are we healthy, and if DNA go wrong, you have miscarriage, or DNA go wrong, you can have cancers or many different health issues. So, same things as the human embryos after implantation, if the genetic material mainly harbored inside the structure called the chromosomes, if the chromosome numbers goes wrong, then you will have many different kind of consequences for the embryos. Either embryo will not be implanted, or embryo will be implanted, but eventually you can have a miscarriage, or you can have an abnormal baby. So most common situation when you have an embryo stay and uh, deliver the baby with abnormal chromosomes is the Down syndrome. During the last 20 years, a new technique has been developed called pre-implantation genetic diagnosis which basically can take the cell through the special embryo bi biopsy technique from the embryos and then you can do the genetic testing on these embryos with various techniques. Now the most commonly used technique is called next generation sequencing technique to check the DNAs. So Using various techniques, you can detect different kind of the issues or problems with the, the DNAs in the, any given embryo. So, what's the difference between PGD and PGS? The really difference is that, first, first of all, it's not so very well defined, but generally speaking, if we are doing the test to diagnose non-genetic disease, say, a couple have certain kind of genetic disease carriers or mutation, you know there's a certain chance that embryo will be affected. That's called pre implantation genetic diagnosis. For example, uh, both couples are carriers for cystic fibrosis, which is one very, very common autosomal recessive disease. Then the offspring have a one third chance to have a disease the baby. So this kind of test is called a diagnosis. So that's called a PGD. Now what is PGS? PGS is S means a screen test. So screen test means anybody might have it, but not necessarily have it. So you are not really diagnosed looking for the disease, but you just screen out some kind of abnormality. That's called a screen test. So this basically is more commonly used in the patient will improve their chance to get pregnant and reduce age age related decrease of fertility or miscarriage, increase of miscarriage. For example, a 39 years old lady have a, about a 30% chance of miscarriage due to the chromosome of normal. So you can screen out of this kind of embryos and that called the PGS. So let's define. The difference between PGD and PGS is that PGD you already know the potential of genetic abnormality you're doing the test. PGS there's no know for sure what kind of genetic disease, but it's more to check the chromosome numbers, which is the age rate in the females, humans. Number two, most of the pre implantation test is for PGS, and much, much less proportion for PGD, because a couple pregnant with a genetic, potential genetic carrier disease is much, much less common than a couple have a high chance of miscarriage due to advanced maternal age. In Modern IVF approach, it is a modern trend, and we also believe that in the ideal world, all the embryos before transfer should be screened for chromosome numbers. So we should do universal screen tests on all the embryos. By doing so, it will reduce the miscarriage rate and increase the pregnancy rate. Just to take the sample as a patient at the age of 35 to 38, 
If you just transfer the embryo at the blastocyst stage, the embryo chance to get pregnant is about 45% with about 8 to 12% miscarriage because at least 30 to 40% of these embryos are not chromosomally normal, which will not get you pregnant given miscarriage. But if you do the genetic screen test, the chance the embryo will get you pregnant will increase to 75% with less than 8% chance of miscarriage. So this is the general application of the PGS. So in conclusion, PGS called, called pre-implantation genetic screen test. The most common technique today used is called NGS, next generation sequence. The application of PGS is more, of, more widely used than PGD and mainly for age-related increase of miscarriage. It also will benefit with any given group of patients going through IVF because overall there are always certain number of the embryos will be chromosomal normal. So if you can screen out this part of the embryo and only transfer the chromosome normal embryo, that will give you a further increased chance of your pregnant with a reduced miscarriage rate. Next time we're going to discuss for the lady at the age of 38 to 42 while the available techniques such as PGS, minimal simulation IVF, embryo banking. So what is the best strategic plan for the late day at the age of 38, 42 when all these techniques are available and what will be most efficient, logical, logical way to utilize this technique to give you the best chance to get pregnant and the lowest chance of miscarriage? That will be the topic of next clip. Thank you.